Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 25th of January 2021 and we're reporting that this morning the decline in the US dollar index has once again resumed or at least initially and may do so well into 2022. So let's take a look. Firstly, just a quick shout out to our latest two videos. One produced yesterday, Bitcoin versus Gold and Silver, Episode 8, Price Setback and Chip Shortage. And on Saturday, our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 22nd of January. And we've placed links to both of these below. A few years ago, and as recent as 2019, we were advocates of a continuing strengthening US dollar, as all of the economic indicators were pointing in that direction. We were given a lot of stick about this, as the likes of Peter Schiff were advocating the dollar's imminent demise, repeated by many of his acolytes. We held firm and stated that we could easily see a dollar index rise above 100, which it did and actually went as high as 103, both in 2016 and again in 2019. However, our views began to change in terms of direction when we could see the effect of the Trump tax cut and increase in public spending was having both on the money supply and the debt index, and ultimately how that would filter through to the value of the US dollar. We began to shift sentiment towards the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020, and this shift increased once economic bailouts and subsidies were announced upon the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic. A couple of months ago, we saw the spot index fall below 90. And we stated that whilst we felt it would hold at or around 89, we would not be surprised to see an 88 index if additional stimuli were introduced without a consequential increase in productivity and revenue. And also, should Biden win the US presidency? Well, we did see in December the spot index fall as low as 89.2 from where it marginally recovered, thereafter hovering around the 90 level. So we've had a situation over the past 52 weeks of a spot dollar index moving between 89.2 and 102.99 or 103. Earlier this morning, we witnessed the US dollar dip again, albeit admittedly slightly. On Friday, the index closed at 90.23. And this morning, as a result of overnight trading, it moved to 90.08. Now this is what some would regard as a relatively inconsequential move. Actu but for such a move, it actually caused some headlines amongst news agencies. Reuters produced an article in the early hours of this morning, GMT-wise. It would have been in the late hours EST with the headline, quote, Dollar Index Resumes Its Decline As Global Markets Turn Hopeful Again, unquote. This is just a short excerpt from that article. Quote, A rebound in global market sentiment put new momentum behind the dollar decline on Monday, while riskier currencies strengthened as optimism about US President Joe Biden's stimulus plans took precedence over the impact of COVID-19. Market sentiment had turned more cautious at the end of last week as European economic data showed that lockdown restrictions to limit the spread of virus hurt business activity, dragging stocks lower. The mood picked up on Monday, however, lessening demand for the safe haven US dollar. The dollar index fell overnight and was down 0.2% at 90.094 
at 0758 GMT. Analysts expect a broad dollar decline during 2021. The net speculative short position on the dollar grew to its largest in 10 years in the week to January 19, according to weekly futures data from CFTC released on Friday. The US Federal Reserve meets on Wednesday and Fed Chair Jerome Powell is expected to signal that he has no plans to wind back the Fed's massive stimulus anytime soon. News which could push the dollar down further. The process of tapering QE is likely to be a gradual process which could last throughout 2022 and then potentially be followed by the first rate hikes later in 2023, wrote MUFG currency analyst Lee Hardman. In these circumstances, we continue to believe that it is premature to expect the US dollar to rebound now in anticipation of policy tightening ahead and still see scope for further weakness this year, he said. Unquote. That's the end of that article. Now, this is relevant. It is, to some extent, preparing the way for a lower US dollar value. And by covering it, when there has been, frankly, just a tiny reduction, suggests to us a prediction of what is to come. Now, admittedly, the likes of Reuters and Bloomberg do not always get it right. But they also do not tend to write articles on items that are relatively inconsequential initially, unless they're seriously expecting larger moves ahead. Now, since their article, the dollar has strengthened marginally, and at the time of producing this podcast, which is 1150 GMT, the dollar index stands at 90.25, 90.25, slightly, ever so slightly higher than Friday's close. Asian Pacific markets overnight closed up. But UK and European markets this morning, now heading towards lunchtime, are broadly down. Now we think Janet Yellen, the new Biden administration's Treasury Secretary, summed up the future quite clearly when she was speaking at her confirmation hearing. Now this is how Bloomberg reported it. Quote, the cost of debit interest payments relative to the size of gross domestic product is now lower than it was in 2008 during the financial crisis, she said. That's thanks in large part to the Federal Reserve's commitment to keep interest rates near zero throughout the economic recovery and its purchases of government bonds at the rate of roughly $80 billion a month. Which brings us to regime change in the investing world. It's here in 2021. It's not reflation and it's not lucrative, according to Janus Henderson's Jim Sielinski. That experiment of expansive fiscal and monetary policy is a shorthand expression of modern monetary theory, which says governments generally have more scope to spend in times of low inflation. As a politician, it's easy to embrace MMT, Sielinski said. You're going to see it in the next few years. Many economies test the limits of this. Growth will recover but markets have already priced in most of what we'll see on the inflation front. Inflation-linked bonds are tapped out, and the curve steepener trade is long in the tooth, says Sielinski, who'd be a buyer of the US 10-year bond at a 1.25 to 1.5% yield. As Japan's experience has shown, this path of fiscal and monetary expansion leads not to surging yields, the money manager said, but to volatility collapsing, end quote. Now, in other words, Yellen is suggesting that more debt can continue and be piled on, and the US will be able to continue to afford it because of its low interest rate regime. Now, we stated, and we were vilified by some sus subscribers, that Yellen is going to embark, or is already beginning to embark, on a road to MMT, modern monetary theory. And it looks as if we're not now the only ones to suggest this, though we were some of the first to do so. The issue is, and this is where it's difficult to calculate at the moment, is to what extent revenues to the Treasury will increase as a result of this extra spending and borrowing. 
and how will it then compare proportionately with the other major industrial and financial economies? Then we shall know where the dollar index will lie and where the price of commodities like gold and silver will move towards. So watch this space. There is a lot more to come. Thank you so much for listening. Please do share, share your thoughts below. And if you haven't already done so, kindly subscribe to our channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.